uh, welcome to Bushfire Records. My name is The Music. And I'm here with a beautiful lady by the names of uh, Rebecca. Yeah? So, we are going to look at um, the costume for Baksimba. Eh? Baksimba goes for Abachisimba Bibachiwomia. Chava kuchia wa Simba Bibachiwomia. <laughs> All right, that's, it's a very long story, but um, for now we are just going to look at the costuming, and then after we shall go through the dance, and then after we shall give you the story of Bak Simba Oba Abach Simba. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, my name is The Music, alongside Rebecca. Stay tuned. First of all, the chikoi, um, that is a fabric worn by uh, people in Africa. It, um, in Uganda specifically, it is most dominant in the central region, eastern region, and western region. Uh, it is just a costume, uh, not a costume, it used to be a, it's a traditional attire which is worn by both men and women in Western Uganda, specifically the Angkore people. Men and women wear chikoi, but in, in other regions, women are the ones who wear them. However, due to the modernity uh, and uh, as culture is not dynamic, they have come up with designs they can have tops they can have uh, bottoms um, they can have uh, top matching things uh, designed by different designers and now worn by men and women but traditionally it is worn by ladies in the central uganda now we are talking about the Baganda people it's worn by women uh, it can be worn on just as a, an ordinary costume or it can be beneath under another costume like a gomas for the part uh, for the purposes of the dance because people used to wear to dance back simba these other dances back simba nanka samwogula those are three dances but they had performed people used to perform them in their daily clothes because they are communal dances they are social dances so that's why people are using those bikois. People are using the bikois. Reason that chikoi is um, an, a, a very light fabric, which can be worn and which can be used uh, with, uh, easily when someone is dancing. The word chikoi is just specifically uh, a term or a language used by the Baganda. So different regions of the country, they have different names. And then you'll find that in Africa, you'll find that even other continents, other countries, I mean in Africa, other countries in Africa, even other continents, because the Indians also have it, they have their different names. The dancing skin or the hide, in, in for the purpose of the dance, we call it a dancing skin because it helps with the dancing. So that one is got from animals. Mainly, they are animal skins from goats. These goats are mainly in the eastern part of Uganda, uh, specifically Soroti district. That's where those goats are. Those goats have got a lot of fur. So that's why we get them from them. Or others can be from uh, the Korobash monkey. In Uganda, we call it Engeye. Sometimes we get also dancing skins from them. And then they are not taken to a tunnel, but tunnelized locally by rubbing, uh, um, rubbing stones on top of, of them, the inside of them, to remove the excess fat and softening them so that it can go around someone's waist well. That is the dancing skin. We have what we call the shash, which is 
called in our local language in Uganda echitambala echitambala that one is just used to tighten the um, the, the chikoi onto a dancer so it is made in any color depending on the costume designer depending on a person uh, designing it couldn't it can be white it can be green it can be blue uh, um, it can be heavier um, it can be uh, uh, red depending on what the designer wants and usually they put it on to match with uh, the the chikoi because the chikoi we are having different colors of the because we have the yellow ones we have the red ones, we have the purple ones, we have those who are flagged, uh, made like the, the Uganda flag. So it depends that we have the white ones. So people just get the shirt or the chitambala depending on the color of the chikoi. If someone is having a white chikoi with a white petticoat, someone can think of a purple uh, kitambara or, or red to bring out the contrast or the beauty in the dance when someone is seeing that dancer at a distance. So that's the use of the, 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 the search. It is made in uh, any, uh, any material which is very easy, uh, easily wrapped around someone's waist. We come to the petticoat. For the ladies, they put on the petticoat. The petticoat can be white, cream, um, it can be black, depending on the designer of the dance or the costume designer of that particular dance. The petticoat, which covers the lady's stomach, in Buganda culture, a woman is not supposed to expose her navel. It is forbidden for her to expose her navel. So what they decided was to come up with a pet coat, something that can cover her a little bit tight on the body and it could uh, enhance the movement of the waist. So that's why it is having, they have that. For the top, the ladies have a top, uh, which is designed depending on still again the the costume designer of any color of any design. It can be part of the garment designed in any format, um, which is really attractive, and any color. And usually, that holds the breasts, the boobs. It can be taken as a bob tube. It helps the boob the, to be in one position. If someone is dancing in a Buganda culture, um, ladies or the audience or people feel offended seeing a um, woman's breasts or boobs moving in any directions. So they want them to be calm be settled in the cell in one place that's why they put on that to hold them together that's the boob tube for the men men don't wear the boob tubes men used to dance bare chest traditionally however due to the the due to the modernity uh, and the costume involvement uh, as culture is not static, culture is dynamic, men started wearing uh, vests. They can be vests of, diff of any color or some come up with any designed top for the men, not to dance bare chest. But the men were dancing bare chest just to show their muscle, to show that they are really strong and energetic. So we have what we call the raffia skirt. The raffia skirt, originally, traditionally, the raffia skirt used to be um, the banana leaves, which are shredded. Then they changed them to palm leaves. Then they changed them to saiso. And with the saiso, depending on the person talking, it can be called a chisenso or a kasenso. It, but all of them have the same meaning and they are the same depending on the person talking 
so extensor or akasenso. That one is tied around the waist after wearing the chikoi, then you tie on the raffia skirt, and then you put on the sarge, which is a chitambala, and then the dancing skin on top. As time goes on, and as I said, culture is not static, is dynamic, people started thinking of something else, so they came up with what we call akajwenge. Akajwenge, they got threads, and then they 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 were made, they were put on a piece of uh, of cloth, and then they also do the same thing of exaggerating. So people have them in different designs and different colors. Others are maroon, others are red, others are made in the Ugandan flag, depending on the costume designer too. So we call that akajwenge, uh, the, the which is a raffia skirt, a modern raffia skirt. Then down all dancers, both men and women, they wear the raffia skirts. They all wear the, um, the the shirt and the dancing skin. And then they all have, must wear the ankle bells. Or some people call them ankle bells. Others call them ankle bells as we pronounce them. But the ankle bells are used to bring the to to add in the harmonious sound when someone is dancing and then they're tied on the ankles. Then that's why their names is anchor bells. <laughs> Then traditional people did not have shoes. We are not having shoes. We are dancing barefoot. We are walking. I mean, barefooted people were walking barefooted. So you find that there are some people who does barefooted. But as time goes on, people invented the uh, shoes, modernity, and then this era, people dancing barefoot is somehow dangerous. You can get, you can injure your feet. So people came up with shoes. Some come up with different dancing shows which can help or are uh, easier for the person to dance and execute the movement well with the footwork for the purpose of these other traditional dance shows not yes we can call them traditional but they, they are handcrafted there are some which are made out of hand um, animal hides there are some which are made out of some strings but uh, for the purpose of these ones, they are made out of um, old car tires. In Uganda, we call them Lugabire. Those old car tires, and then they put on the, sometimes people put on the, the strings, um, which tie them tightly on someone's feet. So it gives that person uh, enough time, their feet are not, they don't sweat. And the reason why they use the old tires, it gives that person a grip on the floor, reduces friction, and then um, someone cannot uh, fall actually if he's dancing or if she's dancing. Two, it is a long lasting thing because the, those tires will take long if someone is using it, they take long to wear out while other people using the sh these other shoes they wear out and depending on that does the other shoes there are some other shoes which are made specifically for dancers dancing shoes those are uh, western shoes those are the ballet shoes something like that but for traditional dancers we do not have shoes so it is hard to get uh, long lasting shoes so that's why people invented or created those dancing shoes out of the old car tires we call them lugabire to make them long lasting because those ones you can wear them you can dance with them for a long long time so the advantages of all this of the, the the significance of these costumes first of all all of them the significance of them is to exaggerate the movements of of that dance two they beautify the dance and the dancers three 
they help in the enhancement of uh, the choreography. Someone can see the choreographer at a distance, depending on the colors, the design, the way people have dressed. Someone can make clear um, formations, uh, uh, and someone at a distance can be easily see, can identify with them. Four, it's also to show the originality of someone, the true belonging, what some people call authenticity. Uh, to me, I call it a true belonging because it is no longer authentic. Authentic is something that will never change, but these things keep on changing. So we are, I, I term it as a true belonging. That when someone dresses the way uh, we've explained, it has a, yeah, a female has a top, which is like a boob tube. It has a pet. She has a pet coat. She has a shirt. She has a rough skirt. She has a dusty skin and a. Uh, um, a coil down all the way down with the ankle bells someone will just look at it and say yes this is a dance from the central uganda or buganda region so it belongs to those people someone will say that yes truly it belongs to those people so that's why i say it's a true belonging so it gives that what someone can call can term us as authenticity someone can look at it and will be able to tell where the dust comes from because the dressing is different from all other tribes despite the fact that other tribes use these costumes for dancing but then the way they wear them is totally different for ladies when they tie on the after having the pet coat on and the top uh they tie on the chukoi the chukoi goes all the way from top from the west and slightly above the ankles why because we tie on the ankle bells so the ankle bells have to be exposed and for ladies ladies are not supposed to show their thighs they are not supposed to show their legs it is a graceful dance which is almost a royal dance for the king so they have to remain down think keep the clothes down and it's a purpose of also telling that the ladies the Buganda women are supposed to keep themselves um, to dress decently they that's what they term as decently a woman dressed down keeps her body warm so that's why it is that down. For the men, it is either slightly above the knees or below the knees. Reason men are allowed to dance, and then when they are dancing, they are energetic, they open their legs, they exaggerate, which is easier for them to do that. And then still they put on the rough skirt, the such, and the dancing skills, which help in the exaggeration and execution of the movements.